Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Collin II, and with me as always is... Matthew High Five Candy Bar Haas. High Five Candy Bar. My favorite candy bar, except for that one part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like the white stuff. I don't know. Just yeah. don't. Nope. <clears throat> the white stuff, baby. That, that's a reference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's... <laughs> okay. Wait, is that... That's the Weird Al cover of um, New Kids on the Black? The, the, right, the right stuff, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, oh, uh oh, oh. The oh, white oh. stuff is like oh, Oreo oh, or something oh, like that. Oh, Ori. Oh. oh. <clears throat> yeah. The, um... Uh, so, <clears throat> Matt, before we start here, I have something that's concerning me in the world mm. that I need to discuss with oh, you. Oh, yeah, what's that? Okay, so I accidentally came across a, conspir okay. a conspiracy theory online. It's okay. this s conspiracy theory that birds are not real. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I've heard of this one. Um, yes. Um, yeah. Basically, I, they're the, like drones or something. Yeah, or... In the 70s, <clears throat> all the birds were killed and replaced by the CIA with drones that are spying on us. <sighs> okay, so... Have none of, none of them ever seen like a dead bird like on the side of the road? They got hit by a car, and you could see like actual, like live, for want of a better word, I guess live part. Like there's nothing electric or you, you know what I mean. Like I how mean, do you explain? Maybe maybe, you know, maybe it's that. so sophisticated that it looks like bones <clears throat> instead of mechanical instruments or something. Gotcha. So they feel pain. That's that's just part of the illusion. Um, <clears throat> they can feel restless if they're like in a cage. You know, they need food somehow, which is interesting. So a, a drone needs food to eat, or it won't survive. Okay. Um, yep. Because that's that's like, really interesting. Like, like so are like worms I'm... now? Are they like drones too? They must be. Um. Maybe that's where they keep all the information. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering because, like, you know, like, like my uncle has a has like a parrot who's like, you know, really old, and I think like older than me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to figure out if, uh, you know, why they didn't kill that parrot mm -hmm. and replace it with a drone, or maybe they did when he wasn't looking. Or maybe, <clears throat> maybe, uh, maybe parrots are still alive, but that's it, you know. Um, <clears throat> then again, no, that would then imply that, you know, they would have to try to kill all the parrots because they don't want, they want to replace all the birds with their drones. And the fact that parrots can talk, that is interest as well, because the parrots might be able to tell people what's going on like hey by the way all the birds are dead they're all drones now so it would actually be you know conducive to their interest to kill all the parrots or other birds that can you know talk My um, which implies either that these drones are just bad at their jobs completely or it's all bullshit either yeah. one um, yeah I mean I was at my dad's house recently and he has some birds pet birds and one of them died while I was there mm -hmm. he was limping around in the bottom of the cage so Aww. does that just mean the battery died in the drone mm -hmm. oh <clears throat> I guess I mean if that's <laughs> what they um <clears throat> I don't know but anyways so the earth is flat you know that's the that's the yeah <laughs> Donald Trump won the election. Um, 
<laughs> yep. <clears throat> frogs are gay, and um, <laughs> I hate this. Yeah, frogs are. <laughs> I hate this country so much, dude. I I, I'm sorry, I just do. Like, 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 there's there's some simulation going on where, like, literally everything bad that can happen is happening at like breakneck speed. Like, I mean, like everything, like infrastructure crumbling, economy sucks, diseases, no health care, you know, pandemic, and people are just believing in the most insane shit possible, and it's like. And, like, they have to, like, it's almost like a drug where, like, they get used to one thing. They have to, like, up their tolerance to, oh, well, it's not enough that they're, you know, like, sacrificing children and harvesting their brain juice. Not Now it's, well, the brain juice turns them into alien special beings that allows them to control people with their minds and the weather, which previously was controlled by the Jews, but now they're controlled by the Democrats. But let's be honest, most of the Democrats are Jews. And it's just like, oh my god, at what point do you just completely like divorce yourself from reality? Like just like one hundred like 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 the, the thread that you had is just like that's that's too much. I, I need just complete fantasy world from here on out. Just fuck reality, fuck logic, fuck <sighs> whatever. Um I just hate this country. I just do. So, speaking of things that went wrong in this country, so, um, let's talk yeah. about uh, the Michael Richards show. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's where it all started, see? Yes. Well, it all started back in the year, year 2000. 2000. Was, it's 2000. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> really, you, actually, technically, you could... Actually, take this all the back to 2000 is where what really things started to to go downhill. I mean, it was going downhill before that, but that was like the like it was almost like going to the roller coaster, the top of the roller coaster, and then it was just going down. Yeah, there. Um, Michael Richards show he started it, so thanks thanks for that, Michael Richards. Yes, I mean it wasn't his fault, but uh yeah. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Maybe. <laughs> the um I'm thinking the network, but maybe it was. Yeah. So, um The Michael Richards Show is an American sitcom television series that was created by um Spike Furstein, who is my Facebook friend. Um <laughs> In case you're listening to this Spike, it's nothing against you, man. Just letting you know. <laughs> Here we go, just make fun of his show. Like, yeah. <laughs> God. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I but, always feel bad about these things where I'm, like, tearing down someone else's work. Like, yeah. Well, well, Spike's done a lot of great things in his career. So, you know, he used to write on Seinfeld and other things, too. So he's, mm-hmm. you know, he he, okay. he he was one of the writers of, of the Soup Nazi episode of, of, uh, of um, Seinfeld. So... He's got a lot going for him, you know, just on that alone. Um, there was a, it was also created by Greg, Greg Cavett, um, Andy Robin, and Michael Richards. So, there we go. It, uh, it debuted on NBC okay. from uh, October 24th till December 19th of the year 2000. And uh, the premise of the show was that Michael Richards was a socially awkward but talented private detective named Vic Nardoza, um, who uh, gets the job done despite his unusual methods. Hmm. Yes. Um, he uh, <clears throat> he's working yep. for this uh, in this company called McKay Investigation Services. Um, Throughout the history of the show, um, misunderstandings and poor decisions get in the way of the cases, but Nardoza always ends up getting the job done, like I said. So, yeah. The show also starred William Devane, Bill Cobbs, Amy Farrington, and Tim Meadows. Yes. Yep. And we are covering the unaired pilot. Yes. Um, yeah, 
just to let you know one thing really quick here, in a 2015 interview, co-star William Devane recalled that making the show was a nightmare. <laughs> so Wow. <laughs> anyways, so... Um, wow. Yeah. Um, what happened in this, uh, in this unaired pilot here, Matthew? <clears throat> well, what happened was I had the pleasure, I guess is the word, of watching it three times for some reason. So <clears throat> I guess I sort of liked it enough to, um, so it, it starts off with this, um, woman, she a job at, at the place and, you know, the guy hires her and, you know, has her working, you know, Michael Richards character to kind of sort of just, you know, show her the ropes, you know, type of thing. And, uh, they got these like little jokes. Like, I guess they were supposed to be, I don't know. Like, like Tim Meadows, he's, he's like talking, you know, like, Oh, well, at least now we got, you know, something, you know, to look at in the office, because, you know, casual sexism is fun, I guess, in, in the early 2000s. And, uh, and then the older dude, I forgot his what his was. Um, oh, it's Bill, Bill, uh, his Bill, character, Co- Bill Cobbs, and, he played a and character. And the actor. Bill Cobbs, he played Jack. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he's been in a bunch of stuff. And oh, yeah. y- you recognize him by his voice. He's got a very distinct voice. Like, you, you know who he, who he is from... And he's like, you know, she seems like a nice person. And from what my 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 understanding is, you know, nice people tend to come from nice families, and nice families tend to like. He does this thing throughout the whole episode, like trying to make like these deep points or whatever. And then Tim Meadows character is like, yeah, great, I'll remember that or whatever. Um, which that was kind of funny, I think. Um, yeah, they're, they're probably the two best, and, best parts of the episode. I don't know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah Tim, because like Tim Meadows was like one of my favorite um, actors on SNL, you know, during like the '90s era and stuff like that. So like, uh, you know, seeing him in this show was kind of cool. But um, the other than that, it was just like so. Basically, long story short, they 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 have this case, Michael Richards' character and this this woman, I forgot her name. Um, where this candy company, um, like the the people like on the board, I guess or whatever, they and they suspect that the founder of the company and who's like the pub base of the company that he's abusing drugs and you know they want to make sure you know that's true before like they you know try to get him help or whatever and like they just go into this whole like gag about like how like Michael Richards likes the candy bars that they have in the office but that they don't sell anymore but they make them somehow which is okay i don't get that but all right you're gonna make product but you're not gonna sell it so like why are you wasting labor okay okay. that's a minor it's like a nitpicking point right there but but, and like it's five bar because it has like five different flavors like you finish like you finish one layer and then you go to like the next one or whatever and like he, he's like making the whole like interview about the the candy bar. Like, how come you guys stop selling this? And oh, can I? Can you hook me up with some of these bars? You know, to solve the case or whatever. Like, like, and then he just, you know, just like leaves after they just tell him like a little bit about you know that they suspect the the founders of using drugs and and then like you know he does a whole Kramer thing where he's like. Uh, and then, you know, shaking his body and, like, thing because he doesn't like the white-flavored stuff or whatever. Uh, and then, so, like, they're driving back and he's like, you, you made me look like a buffoon. Like, he was, like, Kramer, like, a buffoon. It's like, oh, God, like, that's the thing, like, I hate about this. It's like, they're, like, trying so hard to make him like Kramer. It's like, mm, like, anyway, can you can you take it from here? Because yeah, I'm I mean, already it, bored. It, it, <laughs> it, in my opinion, they should have just made this a spinoff of Seinfeld and made him Kramer, you know, um, that would have been better. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's hired to 
check into this thing, and uh, he and uh, Stacy, Amy Farrington's character, um, are on the case here. I'm trying to remember exactly what happened, but the they're they're trying to get um, the guy's DNA. They follow him to the dentist at one point, and uh, <laughs> Vic, Michael Richards' character, pretends to be a dentist and uh, goes into the into the operating room and tries to uh, take stuff out of the guy's mouth, and he does. Turns out it was the wrong patient. You know, like happens. Yep. And, uh, God, yep. God this show is bad. <clears throat> then he does the whole Kramer thing by shaking his body. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, do you want to actually take a break here, Matt? And then we can come back and uh, talk more about the rest of the episode. Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be right back. <clears throat> What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there And we are back. All right, so, Matt. Yep. Oh, boy. Michael Richards. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot to mention a few things. Can I Can I back up a little bit? Oh, sure, of course. Okay, so there's like a B plot going on in this episode as well where Tim Meadows' character... For some reason, they made him, like, addicted to voyeurism. I don't know why. Whatever. Okay. So, uh, they they played up that whole thing where he's he's a, a voyeur, and he was supposed to go to um, some, like, island resort to spy on this um, this guy who was, like, like, an insurance scammer or something. But they were having, like, a like a bikini contest. I don't know, something like that. Um, like a Miss Caribbean uh, contest going on. And then, like, they played up that whole thing where he's like, oh, like, I, I can't go then because of that or whatever. And then he's, like, calling up the dude, and the guy's, like, just, like, admitting to all of his crimes on the phone. And he's like, I really should have taped that, you know? Like, and then they, he calls again a second time, and the guy says the same thing that he's taking state farm for $60,000 a year. And then he repeats his name, me, John DeSantos or whatever. And he's like, I really got to start taping this. It's, it's like, okay. So like, I think I watched it three times because there's like, I see it. Like it's almost funny. I think it's what it is. And it's like, it's just something is like pulling it back. You know what I mean? And where I'm like, I'm seeing these parts. I'm like, Ah, this could be funny. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just something that's not like holding it all together. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. that's just from my perspective. Um, 
it, it's hard to say if it's the writing or the directing or the acting or what is causing the 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 almost funny that isn't quite happening here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's kind of hard to understand. I don't know. It's just like there's there's so many. Uh, I guess good concepts here that just kind of go in a weird direction or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, like I, I'm kind of biased here because, you know, I love Tim Meadows. Like, you know, I was like, I was like, you know, 13, 14 years old when I first started really watching SNL, like on my own. Yeah. And that was like around the time when he quit kind of, but there was like a good two years or so where, I would like, he was like one of my favorite um, actors in the sh- He's just got this really good deadpan sarcasm that I like. Oh, yeah. um, it's just like, I don't know. I, I just, I'm drawn to that kind of humor. So that was kind of cool. Um, and just the, the whole Michael Rich, like Kramer stuff, like, you know, like he's choking on the candy bar because he thinks it's lime and he's like gagging on it. And it's like, and he's like writhing in the car, you know, like, okay. And then like, they're spying on the dude at his house, like they're hiding out in the bushes, and then um, Stacy sees a um, a possum, and they like, you know, he starts screaming like Kramer would scream. Um, he at one point, um, uh, he uh, the the rich guy's having his groceries delivered to him. Which is interesting because that's like a thing now, but back then maybe only big cities like L.A. or wherever the city's taking place did that kind of thing. But um, and like he tries to get into a fight with the guy and he ends up falling over, bumbling like a fool, like Kramer. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's sure. <laughs> I don't. Oh God, this this show. Um, <laughs> the uh. I don't know. I mean, this is part of what they called the Seinfeld curse, too. You know, like where the whole, you know, first outings that each of these uh, actors that were on Seinfeld had in trying to do something after Seinfeld didn't really work. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Like um, Julia Lee's Dreyfus. So she at least, you know, she did the the Christine show that lasted a while. Um, yeah, and then Veep. And Veep, and then of course she plays a character in um in the um Falcon and uh, the Winter Soldier. Yeah, there we go, so, Falcon yeah. Winter Soldier. Yeah, so but yeah, but Jason Alexander, I think he's kind of got the worst of it because I, I don't think he's done much um, since. Well, well, he's he's done a lot actually, uh, a lot oh. of Broadway and other things, and he's been in a lot of movies and stuff, but and and guest spots, and he's done a few sitcoms that failed too so <laughs> which actually we, yeah. which we will yeah. cover in the future on this because <laughs> yeah uh actually michael richards actually probably has the worst of it actually um yeah i'm gonna say that because he kind of yeah revealed that he was a racist on stage um <laughs> yeah he fucked that up yeah because real bad because i was when i typed you know in I didn't realize how long ago this was. It's like Michael Richards' apology video from 14 years ago on YouTube. And I'm like, Jesus, YouTube has been around that long that uh, there's 14 year old videos on. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I didn't. Oh, I didn't man. realize it was that long ago. And I mean, he was even in a in a short lived sitcom um, in 2013 as well. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah. Um, called uh called Kirsty, starring Kirsty Alley. Huh. Yeah. We, yeah, that was 2007 when he did that race. <laughs> yeah, I so I think it's kind of interesting that somebody hired him after that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was five years after. Yeah. <clears throat> or six years after the fact, and he did officially do an apology tour, which, again, I'm not really sure how I feel about apology tours because it's kind of like, is it really sincere or is it just something that you have to do type of thing, but... Yeah, it depends. It, it really depends on the person, I think, because it's like sometimes they are really sincere, and then sometimes it's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he, yeah, that, I remember that that when it happened, that he was saying he was just trying to be shocking, but he was saying weird stuff in between too, like, like, 
oh, those those old prejudices or I don't know, something weird where it's like, mm, that sounds like you're having like a mental breakdown on stage or I don't know. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, who knows? It could have been it, it's it plus two. He was claiming that he was Jewish, but he was never for one thing. He was never um, born to like Jewish parents and he never uh, officially like converted and like, you know, like. They're like this, you know, this rabbi or whatever at the synagogue he was going to is like, yeah, like he, he's welcome to like study our religion and come to our temple, but like, in order to like really call yourself Jewish, like you actually have to be like certified like by a rap, like you can't just say you're Jewish, like you know. <laughs> so yeah, I, just, I think he's just a weird guy all around. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe it would have been better if uh, our previous guest, uh, Larry Hankin, actually got the role of Kramer like you auditioned for. But um, That would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, he does Kramer. But that's the thing. He does Kramer very well. And he's just, it's, and again, like, I, I saw that video you sent me. I saw that earlier in the day, actually, before you sent it to me. And it does seem like the network was, like, really, like, getting in the way of the show, trying to push the whole... Seinfeld, you know, Kramer aspect of it. Like, I remember they even had a song where they were, like, like promoting the show, and, like, one of the lyrics even said, like, with that Seinfeld guy or something like that. So yeah. it's like they were really trying to, like, paint the picture of, like, oh, you love Kramer, right? Oh, well, Kramer's going to be a new show, but it's not actually Kramer. It's the guy who plays Kramer, but he's going to act like Kramer. Okay, and then it just fell... It just fell yeah, flat. it's it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what else happened in this episode here, Matt? Uh. So. <clears throat> yeah, they got the two stories going on. Tim Meadows, he's trying to get um, trying to get dirt on that dude who's um stealing sixty thousand dollars from State Farm every year, and he's uh he always forgets to tape the phone calls every time, and he's he's always like bumbling the calls like saying that he's the name of the guy that he's calling and all this kind of stuff and then the uh, stacy and vic they you know like you know like you said before like they went to the dentist and he got like i think he got saliva and blood and then when he found out that it wasn't him he did the whole kramer thing by shaking his body and gagging and then um because he's got some randall's person's blood which is like why like if you had the right person's blood and saliva, why would that not be disgusting? But yeah. you have the wrong person's blood and saliva, somehow that's disgusting. Like Yeah. Okay, whatever. Exactly. So apparently, like, <laughs> yeah, is blood and saliva just not disgusting on its own terms, but whatever. And then uh and but before that though, they did a whole like um like Chubb's Happy Gilmore scene where he's like, Oh, it's all on the hips or whatever, you know, trying to give him golf pointers and he ends up getting a hair sample first because they couldn't um get a positive result because he had hair dye in his in his hair so oh. they couldn't uh yeah they couldn't um test him positive for drugs uh for that but then they uh i guess they did finally test him positive i don't remember i if well, something like they, that there was another part where they were underneath his house yes Trying to collect his his feces and urine from the toilet. <laughs> that's right. And that's where she saw the the um, possum. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> God. Um. What a way to. Yeah. And they had this weird conversation about soil. Like you got good soil where you live. Like again, it's like weird. Like cheap things like that should could be funny if they were just delivered well or something i don't like again it's just one of those things where it's like it's like i can almost like see what they were trying to do like i just can't quite like get it you know and um, I mean, you can't really put your finger on what exactly caused this to not be funny you know yeah it's yeah uh, so they eventually uh yeah vic eventually um goes there like pretending to be like someone like i, I don't remember oh, oh they, like, they, they they figured out that they thought that maybe he was getting the drugs from um a, a uh, food delivery guy 
who was delivering groceries to him. Yeah. And so Vic posed as the delivery guy one time. After already fucking up the thing, we're trying to intercept the groceries at one point. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's okay. Yeah, that's right. And then, and then she thought that they, she had evidence, but then it turned out that it was Vic, the one that was doing yeah. it. So she, like, oh, she, she recorded the thing. <laughs> oh my god, this show was bad. Anyway, so um, the uh, so they yeah, yeah they go to his house and he basically admits to the whole thing, like you yeah. know, <clears throat> and. He's going to go to rehab, and you know, which is weird. He took it very good. I, you know, I, fi- I figured, you know, a drug addict, you know, would be more, you know, like aggressive and like defensive, you know, and stuff like that. But <clears throat> no, no, he took it like a champ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I started experimenting in the depression. I'm like, wait, that was the 1930s, dude. This show takes place in two that what was in 2000. So that's yeah, like well, like he said he was 80. So. Which means he probably started when he was like what fifteen, like <laughs> yeah, or twenty, maybe yeah. twenty. Uh, you know, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he's like, I can't get, I can't get enough of the white stuff, <laughs> you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because he's talking about the candy bar, but he's really talking about cocaine. You know, um, and then what else? Oh yeah, then they they basically. Um, they ask him for a favor to book a room for two so Tim Meadows' character can go to rehab as well, which is weird because it's a drug rehab place and voyeurism is a sexual addiction, so I'm not sure. Well, it could be how... just it could be just a general rehab, I guess. Yeah, an Eric Clapton rehab, by the way. Um, yeah, <laughs> and the the brochure looks like a guitar. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that was the show, man. That was the show. That was it. That was, yep. <laughs> the greatest pilot ever written and acted <laughs> and directed and produced and unaired. Um, and unaired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the other, the other seven episodes are were aired, but not this one. Yeah, I think it was like nine episodes total. Okay. Yeah, that aired. Um, yeah, oh, no, eight eight episodes. Nine produced, counting this one. Okay. And eight of them aired, yeah, between October and December of 2000. Do um, you want to take a break here, Matt, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, talk about some reviews of the show and some trivia and stuff? Some trivs? Yes. Some <laughs> trivs and <All> right. reviews. <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll be right back, folks. Need a new podcast to listen to? Well, why not check out the Super Podcast from the Super Network at supermarcy.com where we discuss films and pop culture and we do monthly fan-voted commentaries. We are available on all major podcasting platforms. And we are back. Okay, so... um, All right, here's some trivia from the Internet Movie Database. Um, ready for this, Matt? Yes. Okay. During the show's pre-production stages, Michael Richards intended to keep his character as far apart as possible from Kramer. But NBC disagreed, and the character ended up with some similar characteristics to Kramer. Yeah. Um, yep. Stephen Tobolowski... Uh, turned down the royal the role of Brady McKay that William Devane ended up playing. Um, I have actually recently <laughs> talked to Stephen. He might be on our show soon, so just letting you know that too. By the way, so cool. Um, Michael Richards based his character's surname Nardoza after his mother's maiden name Nardozi. Um. <laughs> Cool. Co-star William Devane stated in a 2015 AV Club interview that he did not enjoy working on the show and that it was a nightmare. So, <laughs> there's that. Um, there's, there, yep, there is that. That's the reviews. 
Um, here's some. Uh, I, I mean, that, that was the trivia. I mean, you want to hear some reviews here, Matt? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so. All right, the first one is um, glad it got canceled. This is from <laughs> this is from Maddie Matt Forever. Was this you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> this, this was uh, on um, March eighteenth of two thousand two. Okay. Um, Michael Richards is a hugely talented comic actor who stole almost every scene as Cosmo Kramer on Seinfeld. He is one of the best physical comics out there, and one day I hope he will hit it big either in either TV or the movies. Hopefully he'll make more comedies like UHF and Unstrung Heroes, and not ones like the hugely disappointing Trial and Error. But this show is a, as lame as can be, and I guess... The creators thought it would add flair to assemble one of the biggest ensemble casts in sitcom history. I don't think that really was. Um, <laughs> that way, Tim Meadows, <laughs> William Devane, and Bill Cobbs can have equal time at wasting their talents. As Robert <laughs> De Niro said in A Bronx Tale, there's nothing worse than wasted talent. The Michael Richards show is a <laughs> prime example. Good movie. Yeah. I like that movie. Yeah. Um, here's another one. A two out of ten. Not good. John Six Daniels on the 13th of June, 2021. So just recently. Um, hmm. This show had Krusty written all over it. It wasn't funny at all. It tries <laughs> to be and failed at it. Most of the episodes are dry. Uh, to get past three of them, then you must have a strong willpower. Last words. Horrible show <laughs> coming after the Titan Seinfeld. Um, so, here... Um, here is a uh, another one. From Mr. Op Ed on October 28th of 2000. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and not always for the right reasons. <laughs> um, a titan of physical comedy and nonsense syllables. Um, Richards does provide what one expects from a comedy laughs. I was tickled at least a few times. Yes laugh out loud funny not just a smile he manages to distance himself almost completely from kramer which is no mean trick considering he's meant to deliver a similar level of yucks so i laughed but i also cried much of the show just sits there william devane enters and despite his charm seems like he's accidentally stumbled into the wrong stage and then just tries to fit in the Tim Meadows character is even more displaced. Bill Cobbs and Amy Farrington have potential. Um, mind, this isn't because two actors can act and two can't. They all can, but only the last two are remotely integral characters to the show. At least the um, premiere was written. I'll certainly give it another chance and hope... Uh, Devane and um, Meadows get better lines and plotting. So this was like written during the time the show actually <clears throat> came out. So, Right, yeah. Okay. Here is a uh, 7 out of 10 written just this past February in 2021 um, by <laughs> Wiley Schmidt. Worth watching. Don't listen to the negative Nancys. This show is fun, and at least worth checking out once. Plus, it won't take <laughs> you very long, being that there are only eight episodes. Michael Richards is great in this, and not too far off from all 
at all from Kramer. Um, which I think was a wise choice not to change what works and makes people laugh about his natural humor. The other characters are okay, and the writing is decent, but it certainly has the feeling of a show that wouldn't be around for very long, and it definitely reminds one of similar shows that didn't take and had a bit of a rushed feeling to them. Like Norm MacDonald's show Norm, which was fortunate enough to get three seasons. Without Kramer, Seinfeld would have never hit the stratosphere level that it did. And the Michael Richards show showcases some of what made Cosmo Kramer everyone's favorite Seinfeld character. And had, and still has, them laughing out loud at his silly yet brilliant antics. That's a bit presumptuous to say everyone's favorite Seinfeld character. I mean, yes. that's not possible. It's everyone's favorite. I mean, <clears throat> my favorite character is the third guy from the left in the background of that one scene. Oh, I think I know what scene you're talking about. It's good stuff. Yeah, he just stands there really well. Yeah, he's no, he's a good stander. Yes. Um, no, you might think that the you might well you might think that might be a you know a taken for granted thing, but no, like standing is a you know a skill all, you know, on its own. I mean, I mean, and, and Seinfeld was a stand up, so he 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 did it too. So you know, it's all good. Yeah. Not everyone can just stand. I mean, you've seen. You've seen bad standers before. I mean, like Trump, for example, he he can't stand very well. He's got a weird standing posture, you know? Yeah. So, like, it's not, you know, can't just take it for granted that everybody, you know, is a good stander. And sometimes he wears his pants, <laughs> just facts, pants backwards. Man. Sorry. Yeah. He but wears, still. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um... It was a bad, um... Bad film or whatever, uh, yes. low resolution. Uh, <laughs> yep. <clears throat> yep. 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 Okay, so um, it's the one thing he can. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else here, Matt? Before about the show, um, would you recommend it to anyone to watch no. this pilot? <laughs> no. No. <clears throat> What about to no, Trump? Would you recommend he watches it? Sure. I mean, yeah, because I don't care for that guy at all. So, sure, by all means, watch some show that's not really good Could, and kind of waste your time a little bit. I mean, his whole life is a waste of time, so whatever. But Could we do to him uh, like, like, know, like, what they did to, like what they did to Alex in um, A Clockwork Orange, you know, and like pry open his eyes and make him watch yeah this. yeah <laughs> well they made him they made him watch like a bunch of um, <laughs> like violent and like disturbing yeah. footage i guess yeah to make him feel mm -hmm. guilty about him but wouldn't that just desensitize him more than he already was so like, wouldn't that even, like, make him more of, like, a violent psychopath? Like, whatever. Uh, I don't know. I'm no I'm no scientist. It, it, yeah, it was, it was a um, controversial therapy, I guess, is the word. Um, <laughs> yeah. That happens. Um, so, you know, it's controversial. It's, you know, yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it does. Um, so, um, would, uh, what any anything else before we uh wrap things up here, Matt? Uh you know, just uh you know, be a good person I guess and you know, watch stuff that you like to watch on T V you, know? <laughs> you know, or or watch <laughs> or, or watch stuff that you don't like to watch or, or just don't watch TV if you don't like to watch TV if you just want to you know read a book or you know listen to a podcast go somewhere because now you know you know you, you can, are good you can do whatever you want folks you know 
Um, I would uh, I would recommend folks that you uh, go and uh, check out all two real two dot com. Um, give us a five star review on the Apple Podcast app or any other app that you can do that on. I don't know what's going on in the internets these days. Yeah, uh, yeah. do that or whatever, what have you, and yes. And uh, make sure you uh, follow us on the on on the grams um, at Cullen Park. The grams, yeah, yeah, Cullen Park on the grams, on the on the twits, and the and the books. We do have a yeah. We do have a Facebook. We do have a Facebook group called the All Too Real Two Podcast Group, which um, is is an awesome place to to be, man. It's, it's it's like, yeah, it's what the kids are doing these days, and um, a lot cooler than like Cedar Point or any place like that. You know, it's it's like, you know, soups fun, man. Soups. Yep, I like soups. Soup. I like soup. Soups, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like chicken noodle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um. Make sure you all out there be kind to each other. Rewind each other. Wait, what? I don't know. How do you rewind people? Just make them think about their past. No, you don't do that because that's not always good. Um, yeah, I mean sometimes it is, but um, yeah. But 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 you know not you, always. But but when you go back in time after you rewind your life and you run a movie, make sure you rewind it before you return it because yeah. Uh, as a former video store employee myself, that kind of sucked, man. It did. Um, it, yeah. Yeah. You know. Be kind. Rewind. Get vaxxed. You know. Wear a condom. <laughs> wear a mask if you still have to. Um, <laughs> you know. And, uh. Eat soup. Because yeah. It's, because it's good. You know? Chicken noodle. It's good for you. Yeah, it's good for you. Um, Go to Panera. Get some chicken noodle with some bread. It's good. Dip the bread in it. Ooh. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. There good you stuff. go. Good stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Until next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for <laughs> listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast. A Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.